Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flick Show. My name is Chris Wallace, episode 484 of the Ping Pong Flick Show. And we've got a few, just a few updates, but a uh, big one from Warner Media, HBO Max. But I want to start off with Birds of Prey because that is coming out this weekend in a few days, just two days, uh, one day if you're watching this tomorrow. Um, and Birds of Prey has updated their industry tracking estimate numbers. Luis Fernando has tweeted this out. Updated industry tracking estimated numbers for Birds of Prey are out with industry expecting Birds of Prey to open in the 50 to 55 million dollar range domestically in America and 60 to 70 million at the international box office. Basically the same as Shazam, not considering China as uh, Birds of Prey is not opening there. And, you know, there's not a lot of theaters open over there anyway because of the coronavirus. But so according to Luis Fernando globally it's looking at around maybe 110 to 125 million dollar range uh globally which is not bad considering uh that this movie's production budget is 80 million dollars uh, it, it will definitely uh break even and make a uh, gross profit out of that now it's not that big um considering shazam didn't do expect didn't do aquaman numbers do, nor does it have to do aquaman numbers but then again aquaman kind of opened small as well so there, it could there's could be a reason for this birds of prey movie to have a lot of legs uh and in, in garnishing a pretty great rotten tomato score so far if you care about rotten tomatoes uh i know a lot of you still do Birds of Prey right now is sitting at a 90% of fresh tomatoes with a total count of 81 reviews. So we'll see how much it holds up at this fresh tomato as as we go on. And we'll, you know, be interested to see what the cinema score as well for the general audience and to see uh, for people who uh, go log in to Rotten Tomatoes to put their own audience score and to see how this would, uh, you know, how this rating will go, how it will compare to the critic score mostly positive so far everywhere from most people um there are some uh, not so good reviews here and there but once again these are critic reviews uh this is not audience reviews and it's not and most importantly it's not your review so please go out and watch it check it out yourself if you if this movie is your thing um if it's not then whatever but uh for dc films this is the next dc film coming out uh as a big fan of dc films dceu i am definitely going to check it out to see how i uh think about this movie this will be a uh, interesting foray into a new smaller segment of this dc universe it could potentially spin off to you know maybe these other characters going into their own films or possibly hbo max which we'll talk about soon enough right um and for people who think this is anywhere near like like a Marvel movie, think again, okay? Kathy Ann had posted this. Kathy Ann's Birds of Prey is not your typical comic book movie. This is the director of Birds of Prey. She said this, one of Yan's references for making Birds of Prey was James Mangold's Logan, an X-Men movie focused on Wolverine. He made a road trip movie slash western. I think that that is interesting to me, saying, why can't this be a certain genre of movie, but also happen to have a recognizable character? I think with the intersection of superhero movies and cinema, if you want to call it that, there's more of an intersection now because there has to be. It's because you can't keep giving them the same amusement park ride over and over again almost into something what martin scorsese says in terms of cinema i don't know really she's knocking that or actually kind of focusing trying to tell us what type of movie she's trying to do she is making a superhero movie but the focus is that not so much of an amusement park ride over and over not another conveyor belt type of movie 
Now, that also means it's not your typical superhero movie. Like Logan is not your uh, typical superhero movie. Um, you know, Batman v Superman is not your typical superhero movie. Things like that. And I think I could truly appreciate that. I won't really fully appreciate it until I actually watch the movie and actually get what she's trying to say here. Or if she can not actually um, uh, put this idea into her movie as as is the way I think she's putting into it um, so that um, I'll have to determine later after I watch the movie but having her say this is a good thing and I think it speaks well especially for DC for right now we're trying to DC's trying to uh, differentiate itself away from other comic book movie genres like uh, comic book movies like Marvel Cinematic Universe for instance and instead of trying to be a copycat of another universe that's financially and uh, very successful critically successful do something different so that maybe in the back of people's minds when they think DCU they're not going to be they're going to be surprised they're going to be actually um wanting to see more they'll be they, they'll they'll use marvel as that that's our amusement park ride and they'll say go to dc and says well this is, could be a thought-provoking movie this could be a fun movie this could be a family movie this could be a, a more horrific movie depending on where they go with um maybe justice league dark or they could be a, a much more a bigger drama it could feel like an independent film you know there's so much ways that dc can go through because they're not restricted by the marvel creators by Disney to make it uh, PG-13 all the time right so I like this way of thinking I like that they're grabbing these different directors and um, figure out what they want to do with these characters uh, in a way that uh, is different from their competitors and trying to really work with it and uh, you know it remains to be seen how successful it will be, but so far I'm liking what, what's what been happening so far within the DCU, and uh, hopefully that will flourish as well. That doesn't mean I'm not thinking about just the, the theaters movies, right? That, like I said, uh, it's possible with those Birds of Prey that they're even talking about spinning off possibly these characters onto an HBO Max, right? Now you're wondering, how does that work? Does Warner Brothers get involved? They're making movies for Warner Media. Uh, not war for um, HBO Max, uh, not necessarily. Actually, Warner Brothers and uh, Warner Brothers Pictures, Warner Media especially, um, had put out th this little media release in terms of uh, talking about the film production that's going to be happening uh, for HBO Max to be presented on HBO Max. And I thought this was really interesting in terms of, you know, movies or things like this guy right here on the right. So, I'm going to read you, read to you this press release, which I think is very intriguing. Warner Brothers Pictures Group and HBO Max announced Warner Max, the feature film production arm for the new streaming service. Los Angeles. Okay, uh, I don't want to say that. The creation of Warner Max, a new film label that will serve as the feature production arm of HBO Max, was announced today by Ann Sarnoff, the chair and CEO of Warner Brothers and Warner Media Entertainment and direct-to-consumer chairman. Robert Greenblatt. This unique joint venture between one of Hollywood's most successful movie studios and its sister company, HBO Max, which launches in May, will ensure that the new platform has a steady stream of high quality and highly curated original films. With an initial target of 8 to 10 mid-budget movies per year the new joint venture will be overseen by hbo max's chief content officer kevin riley and chairman of warner brothers picture group toby emmerich who share green light responsibility for more max films and will work in close collaboration with senior executives carolyn blackwood um, and sarah aubrey Jesse Henderson, executive vice president of the original feature films uh, for HBO Max, will expand her role to serve as the day-to-day -day head of the label and liaison between HBO Max and Warner Bros. Uh, picture group and jointly report to Aubrey and Blackwood. This new partnership will take advantage of the Warner Media Organization's vast feature film expertise, library, resources, and relationships with Warner Max, utilizing existing Warner Brothers Pictures infrastructure, including physical 
production. Warner Brothers and New Line Cinema will continue to create mid-budget fare for a traditional theatrical distribution, while Warner Max will create a new pipeline for filmmakers looking to make a particular type of film or connect with a specific audience that will be best reached in the streaming environment. The first Warner Max titles will premiere in the service in 2020 and Warner Brothers will be responsible for distribution of these titles in all other media and territories beyond the HBO Max SVOD window. From the get-go, we have been strate strategizing with Toby and Carolyn about HBO Max original films, says Kevin Riley, Chief Content Officer, HBO Max, and President, TNT, TBS, and True TV. We're going to deliver a collaborative and lean process for talent, make a range of quality films, and provide a platform for each of them to have cultural impact. Now, HBO Max will be home to a robust collection of the legendary Warner Brothers Film Library and a new slate of original Warner Max films. Working with Kevin, Sarah, Jesse, and their, their teams were committed to creating dynamic and compelling films that draw on the depth and scope of the creative sort resources across Warner Media, says Toby Emmerich. We've, we're excited to help make HBO Max a destination for both film lovers and the creative community, while delivering a win across the entire Warner Media organization. Warner Brothers Pictures Groups has long been the gold standard for filmmaker-driven storytelling. We are proud to be in the features business with them and continue that legacy on our SVOD platform, says Sarah Aubrey. Warner Max gives us special opportunity to continue cultivating this style of rich and diverse storytelling and couldn't be in better hands than with our head of features, Jesse Henderson, who's built her career in this space. It's been great collaborating with our colleagues at HBO Max to take full advantage of our shared strategic advantages and creative expertise to make Warner Max a competitive player on the original SVOD film space from day one, says Carolyn Blackwood, Chief Operating Officer, Warner Brothers Picture Group. So, what does this all mean? Well, let's go back. All right, let's go back for a second. Um, we'll know now the initial target of 8 to 10 uh, mid-budget movies per year, right? And this is going to be done by a new uh, a new uh, uh, label, right, called Warner Max. Warner, it's be a Warner Brothers and um, HBO Max, Warner Max. This label, this group is going to be making movies with the same mid-production, uh, using the same kind of production uh, resources as the Warner Brothers Pictures. So these are movies, right? So it's very much like saying Netflix makes their own movies. Well, Warner Max, uh, HBO Max is going to have its own movies, um, and it's going to be by Warner Max. They're going to distribute. They're going to. It's going to premiere on HBO Max. And then uh, they'll have a different services afterwards, right? Beyond the HBO Max. They're going to have to do that uh, later on, possibly even physical media, right? So there's that. But uh, what I love about this, okay, uh, what I love about this is as it says right here. Warner Max will create a new pipeline for film for filmmakers looking to make a particular type of film or connect with a specific audience that would be best reached in the streaming environment. What does that sound like to you, right? Uh, for filmmakers who are may not be in the theatrical already, right? Uh, filmmakers who have uh, there's a particular type of film they want to do, you know, they, they want to make for a specific audience. I don't know, like maybe us, right? And it, they'll be best reached in the streaming environment, and you know they can get more subscribers out of this thing. So it's a win. It's a win for a Snyder cut. I mean, this is just. It's just ripe uh, for Zack Snyder's Justice League to appear on uh, HBO Max using Warner Max as its production, right? Uh, they, they, were, they can get Zack Snyder in. Uh, they can uh, make movies or even series or, or content specifically around a specific audience, which is a lot of the Snyder fans, the people who are championing, who are trying to fight for the release of Snyder Cut. I mean, this just sounds like it's really 
coming into the motion. It's coming together very well. Um, we don't know of what eight to ten movie budgets there are planned that are actually will premiere on the service this year this year so uh, i'm truly excited for this i think this could spell a very good uh a thing uh, for zack snyder and for other creators out there who um you know who may not be able to create in the bigger format of the theatrical distribution and stuff like that but uh, able to come down uh, to HBO Max, uh, Warner Max. And like they said, the first Warner Max titles will premiere in the service in 2020. Warner Bros. will be responsible for distribution of these titles in all other media and territories. So it's still possible what this means is that even though it premieres on HBO Max, premieres on the service, that it could still, Warner Bros. could still distribute this to a, a you know, limited run in theaters and also the physical copy for you people who want the physical copy of such, um, of such of these projects. So I think this is great. And so eight to 10 bid bunches of year per year, and they're going to keep going, right? They're going to keep at it. They're going to um, bust out eight to 10 this year, eight to 10 next year, eight to 10 another, you know, every year to get more stuff in there. They're going to, they're going to be asking for content. They're going to be trying to get more content. They're going to be pushing content down the audience's throats because they need to put more stuff on the streaming service to be a viable streaming service in this day and age. They're fighting against Netflix. They're fighting against Disney Plus. What better way to go out, uh, come out the gate with a with with a giant Excalibur sword, which is Zack Snyder's Justice League, right? And it doesn't end there, right? If we get this eight to ten budget things, put Z uh, the the Snyder cut. Justice League 1 this year or, or next year, Justice League 2 the next year after that. Just keep pushing it out. This is another great way uh, to have, uh, you know, movies um, directed and created by, uh, you know, auteurs and, and directors that really have an incredible vision that um, they not necessarily needs to connect to anything to a larger universe outside of this. The budget will be a little smaller they don't have to think about uh, selling this uh, content to theaters and distributing through all that uh, marketing and stuff once they're done plop it on the service they're getting money from the subscribers it's 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 it makes so much sense look look what's happening right now in this day and age disney plus they're going to have their own movies the mandalorian which are on netflix you know and so i'm even talking about series as well um and all the movies they're producing for these things under uh, six underground six underground, um, you know all all these different movies that are just uh, you know it does they don't have to put so much more budget into it uh, because it's releasing on their own service uh, and they're not restricting the directors to make it a certain way and certain things. So um, I think this is a fantastic idea, and I think this is the start of us full kind of seeing what's going to happen with Zack Snyder's just and kind of it's just kind of really coming together uh and, and in a most interesting way uh and, and a way that actually makes sense makes it seem viable uh for this to come out like they've been saying it all along that uh there's big rumors there there are talks that uh the Snyder Cut could be released on HBO Max well here it is this is the this is the secret uh, fully revealed to us right now, Warner Max Films is going to make this happen. Uh, and it's going to be the one, the, 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 you know, the able to bring this Zack Snyder's content to HBO Max. So hopefully we're right about that. Hopefully this is actually coming true in the way we think it's probably becoming true. Uh, and I can't be any more excited. I can't, I can't wait to see what other things are on here as well, because it's not just this. You know, it could be anything. It could be, you know, whoever wants to put movies, you know, on there for 
any director that you feel that, um, uh, you know, Scott Derrickson, who just got, you know, canned or walked away. Uh, maybe he wants to make his, I don't know, if he's, he's going to be the Justice League Dark director. Who knows, right? J.J. is going to put something on there. You know, we could have so many different uh, versions of Superman with so many different versions of Batman, uh, different stories interwoven or non-interwoven and in their separate universes like that. It's just more content for us. And I think that spells great, uh, valuable, and uh, exciting things for the future uh, for of DCEU or DC film. So great, great article. So, uh, but we're talking about Zack Snyder's Justice League. And I just want to point out that, um, you know, the, the fan posters is ending pretty soon. Uh, within two days or one day, w whenever you uh, see this, uh, Vero kind of pushed out a little bit more. Uh, we're blown away by the quality and creativity of the hundreds of fan-created posters generated by the Vero community and exhibited on Zack Snyder's Justice League fan posters profile. See for yourself in Vero. Um, you can go on here and you can see just the amount of content um, that has been pushed so far. Amazing work. We're up to 723 submissions. Um, um, and a great, fantastic art from everybody within the community and outside the community. Um, it's just great to see the amount of excitement and pure love and joy uh, for uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. But there's still time for you guys to participate. I mean, one day, sure, but there is still some time. So, um, you know, if you th or you're thinking about even putting something in or something like that, go ahead and share it. Uh, put it in some minutes to Zack Snyder's uh, fan just post posters, or you can hold on to it and then you can submit it into that two hour. I think it was a two hour window uh, during the uh, Snyder Cut Art Festival. So there's two places you can submit it for Zack Snyder. Check it out and hopefully maybe you know perhaps maybe um you'll win and uh it'll be uh i'm i'm still you know wondering what zach's gonna do with it uh and uh we still haven't even got a clue what the the prize is for for the poster that he will choose so that's still exciting uh, we, i don't know what's happening on february 14th what's going to be revealed there if anything or which uh, poster he's going to choose um and also what prize he's going to give away so that is and it's going to be an exciting weekend next weekend all right guys well that is it for tonight thank you so much for subscribing thanks so much for watching i'll see you next time